A doubleheader of NBA playoff action on this Wednesday night around the association. He's Donnie, I am Ben. We're the two premier NBA handicappers on this network. And we get you set for another night of a set of two games. Both game fives, both one seeds in either conference in action. Back on their own home floor. We start with the first game inside TD Garden. The Celtics booked as a 14 and a half point favorite with a potential series clinching victory tonight over Cleveland. With a win, Boston back into the Eastern Conference Finals for a third consecutive year. 15 points earlier this Wednesday morning, now 14 and a half in favor of the Seas. The over under is 206. Let me ask you this in two ways, DRS. Last time we were in Boston, game two, it was the Celtics losing big on their own home Mm -hmm. floor to Cleveland as a 14-point home favorite. Let's start with this. Is there any chance the Celtics lose outright tonight once again inside TD Garden? No, because if you're taking a look right now, let's just go FanDuel Sportsbook right now and say, okay, what's the points prop here for Donovan Mitchell? It's not even listed. I don't think he's going to play tonight, so I don't think they can win this game. And also, sometimes we do see this, Ben, in the previous game. Cleveland didn't win the game, but they did cover the spread. And it's one of those where you sort of can rally the troops for a game without your superstar player there. Then, as we know, Ben, like the bottom falls out sooner than later. You thought that that would get your last great effort at home, and then it's a formality. The series isn't going any longer than the next game, which means human psychology dips in a little bit. All right, we've got to travel to Boston, one more game, and you get absolutely pounded in the first half. Now, granted, it's the playoffs. It's not a regular season game in February, and these guys do have a lot of pride. But I've seen that so many times. It's like, boy, I didn't expect that performance without your key player. And then you say, oh, well, it's supposed to lose by 20 to 25 points, and they do that tonight. Yeah. That's the angle I'm looking at on what I'm actually getting from the Cleveland Cavaliers because also on top of that, Some guys that performed very well without Donovan Mitchell, we now have tape on the way that the Cleveland Cavaliers want to play without Donovan Mitchell. So a lot of things going against the Cavaliers here for me. Yeah, completely agree. Listen, Boston wins this series in five games tonight. Now the second part of that conversation is the cover, 14 and a half in favor of the Seas. As Donnie alluded to, the Cavaliers did not win but they did cover as a pregame 12-point dog at home in game number four, 109-102, the only time in this set. Both teams have scored 100-plus points, pushing us to an over of the shortest total that we had seen at 204 and a hook tonight at 206 for game number five in Boston. If you're trying to find a best bet in this game, Donnie, if you're trying to find some value in this fifth game where the Celtics are a 14 and a half point favorite, how do you do it? I'm probably going to take guards here for Cleveland and take a look at last night. Look, Garland had 40 minutes he played, 12 of 27. Ends up scoring 30 points and shot 13 three-point shots, making four of those. That's yeah. almost like a carbon copy, Ben, what you would get out of Donovan Mitchell in the starting exactly. lineup. It's like, okay, I'll play that Donovan Mitchell role. But then you take a look at the offset guys, right? You take a look at Levert, 39 minutes, 9 of 18 from the floor. These are a lot of shots that they normally wouldn't be getting because Donovan Mitchell takes those shots at this point. But also, the three-point line. Here's what the key ingredient's going to be. How do we see you need to beat the Boston Celtics if you're a 15-point dog? It's not like, let's be ultra-efficient on offense, slow the game down, and score in the low block. No, it's go out, shoot as many three-point shots as you can, and if we can shoot 40 of them and make 45%, we're going to be in this ballgame. So maybe it is the three-point shots, which have been the death of me here, quite frankly, in the playoffs, trying to match up who's going to make those. But if you are Cleveland tonight, you're not pounding the ball down low. Like, literally, Max Struess in that last game, I think he had his first five triples, ended up five of nine. He's going to have to repeat that performance. Garland's going to have to make more than four three-point shots. The uphill climb is going to be nasty, but I think the pathway to covering this line is shooting three-point shots for Cleveland. So for me, it's not necessarily looking at Boston from any player points perspectives or any three-point shots here because we expect good performances out of the star players, but we always get a little bit tricky. In the fourth quarter, if you don't need those superstar players to be in there, why does Tatum need to get to 30 points if he has 24 and they're already up 16 points with four minutes to play? He's not going to be in this game. So for me, Cleveland is going to play this bell-to-bell, and a lot of guys that aren't used to taking a lot of shots again will be able to take those shots. That's the way I'm approaching this, more from a prop perspective from the Cavaliers than taking a look at a side or a prop perspective from the Celtics side.
Listen, the Cavs knew that the great equalizer, if they were going to pull an upset shorthanded without Spider, and by the way, that 14 and a half point spread does indicate that Donovan Mitchell is not going to play tonight and no props listed at this moment. Could change by the yeah. time we tip tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time in Boston. But the Cavs knew the great equalizer without Spida was the three-point shot. 48 attempted threes as a team 48 <laughs> yeah. of their 94 overall field goal attempts 51.1 percent of cleveland's field goals on uh monday night in game number four came from three-point range because of the volume it gives you opportunities then to look at the three-point numbers darius garland he attempted 13 only made four not overly efficient his number tonight Two and a half. Max Struess, a great mm. three-point shooter. Five of nine. His three-point prop. Two and a half. The over has some plus money. Struess was also great in terms of kind of orchestrating the offense a little bit. Seven dimes, seven boards. His assist prop tonight, three and a half. The over plus money once again. Do like that look for Max Struess. Jason Tatum on the other side had not scored 30 points in a playoff game yet for the Celtics until they took the trip to the land in game number three. Now he scored 33 in two consecutive points prop tonight for game number five, 28 and a hook. DRS, now we go to Oklahoma City. It is game number five tonight between the Thunder and the Mavericks in a series tied at two games all. Plenty more in this game coming your way after the break, but OKC, four and a half point favorite tonight against Dallas. Yeah, and rightfully so. They should be the favorite. They're supposed to be their number one overall seed now in their own building. You saw them play very well in that last game to even up the series to say, hey, man, we're not going back to OKC down 3-1. Now we can go back to OKC and take a series commanding lead 3-2 once this game is done. The struggle I'm having with them so many times in the playoffs is later. Yesterday, you actually took two overs. You won those, even though the games technically weren't all yeah. that high scoring compared to regular season games. It's always interesting to me because as you get later, every possession, as I talk about, means so much more at this point so I probably technically lean towards the under even though these are two very good offensive teams with some superstar talent that can really get after it I like the under 213 but we'll get into some player props after the break for sure yeah smallest over under of this series so far yeah. where three of the previous four games have stayed under their pregame total 213 that number as of right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook between the Thunder and the Mavs we continue to preview the game in OKC with a best bet up next in a series tied at two games a piece we head to game number five tonight in Oklahoma City between the Thunder and the Mavs who takes this decisive game to hold that series advantage at three games to two the Thunder book is a four and a half point favorite inside Oklahoma City tonight with a total at 213. Donnie, earlier in the show, we talked about the best bet for the doubleheader tonight with the fade the public poll. Both you and I believe in OKC. If we do, more than likely to cover this four and a half point spread. They have covered in five of their six playoff wins. Six of their eight playoff games have stayed under. You lean under tonight with that total of 213. Now let's talk some prop perspective for this game, the nightcap of the doubleheader on this Wednesday. What grabs your attention? Oh, it's, superstars grab my attention tonight. And I know it's a little cop. I like, oh, you know, use like those secondary guys. But when the games start to get ramped up, and what I mean by ramping up is second level of the playoffs here, late in the series, 2-2, two, two, where are you going to lean on? Your superstar players, not your C guy on the offense to shoot 10 three-point shots to see if he can make five of those. The reason I bring that up is last night, what did you see in Madison Square Garden? Your superstar player in Brunson's like, you know what? Series is tied up. It's my time now. I'm going to shoot 35 plus yep. times. What did you see in the nightcap last night? Luka Doncic going like, I'm, or excuse me, uh, Nikola Jokic. I'm not losing this. Like, absolutely not. We're not losing this game. It's all going to go through me. So I have that sort of same vibe for tonight's action, which includes the Dallas Mavericks and OKC. It's Shea Gilgis Alexander, 31 and a half. Of course, it's going to be that level. You know, he's going to fall between 26 points and 35 points every time. He's going to have to be huge tonight and effective in order for them to get a victory. Mm. But on the same time you take a look at Doncic where he just came off of a triple double in a loss do you think he's going to be passive tonight the one guy that's always intriguing me through in the series though is I don't know if it's just because a really good defender is being placed on Kyrie Irving where he can't get those shots and score 25 plus yeah. points a night to sort of be that ride or die guy along with Luka so I'm really focused on Luka Doncic I think he has to be that guy if Dort's going to take out Kyrie and let's just say PJ Washington is maybe not connecting on as many three-point shots as he's hit over the past couple games it's got to be Luka for me so that plus three 330 price on a triple double really stands out because I do believe he's going to battle this game and go this series we have to win this game if we want to win this it's got
got to be on me tonight. Yeah. His usage rate is going to be through the roof, Ben. At least five triples for P.J. Washington in yeah. the last three games for Dallas was the Mavericks' leading scorer in game number four. That's not necessarily a good thing. And Luka did record a triple-double. And it's hard to say triple-doubles are not great, but it was not a great triple-double out of no. Luka Doncic, at least from the scoring component of it. A finishing that game just 6 of 20 from the floor. 27 and a half is the points prop for Luka Doncic tonight. 21 and a half, number four, Kyrie Irving. The lowest we have seen pregame here in the four-game set. And when you look at Luka, it's been the struggles from deep. His best performance was game number two. He was 5 of 8 from 3. In game three, another victory for Dallas. Just 1 of 4. So not great but didn't hoist a ton of shots, was one of eight in game number four as Dallas was abysmal from three and not great from the free throw line either. Shea Gilgis-Alexander, this is what he does. 31 and a half now is yep. the points prop. Here's his four-game yep. scoring output in this series. 29 in game one, 33 in game two, 31 in game three, 34 in game four. There is never that far of a bottom for SGA when it comes to what he is going to do in the scoring department. That's the second game tonight. OKC a four and a half point favorite total 213 against the Mavericks. First game in Boston. The Celtics a heavy favorite laying 14 and a half total at 206. We do not expect at this moment Donovan Mitchell to play in game five tonight for Cleveland.